Well, how would you it's agree? It's a com combination of terms of critical and integrity. Why don't you just define, have her define those terms? Well, would you agree, ma'am, that part of maintaining that chain of custody and getting it right is to ensure that the item hasn't been tampered with? That is correct. And would you agree, ma'am, that another aspect of that maintaining the chain of custody is to ensure that the item hasn't been contaminated? That's correct. Now, on direct examination, you were giving us some background as to your previous employment. Is that correct? That's correct. I think you mentioned that your first job out of college was with the Kern County DA's office. Right. Um, you said you worked as a criminalist there, right? That's correct. But that was only a temp job, wasn't it? It was a temporary position as a criminalist, yes. Right. And in fact, you were laid off in that position, correct? Correct. And your next job after that temp position with the Kern County DA's office was in the private sector. You're working with a private laboratory, right? That's right. You weren't working as a criminalist then, were you? Toxicologist. But you weren't working for a, a, a law enforcement agency no. processing crime scenes or doing criminalist work? Uh, not processing crime scenes, no. And you weren't working for any law enforcement agency, correct, in that job? The laboratory I worked with contracted work from various law enforcement agencies in the area. But you were not going out and actually involved in the collection of any evidence when you had that job? No, I wasn't. Now, you said you joined the LAPD in January of 1994? Excuse me, Mr. Newfeld, let me for forgive me for interrupting you. Let me see counsel without the court report. Let me see Mr. Cochran, Mr. Darden, Mr. Darden. Thank you, Council. Mr. Newfeld, we're about to get into LAPD employment. Oh, please. please. Thank, Thank you. you. My apologies for interrupting. Notwithstanding the fact, ma'am, that when you joined the LAPD in January of 1994 as a criminalist one, as of June 13, 1994, you were still a trainee, weren't you? I was a criminalist one. Ma'am, but weren't you also still a trainee at that point? Overruled. You can answer the question. I was employed as a criminalist one. Well, let me, what, what day did you, was your first day at work, ma'am? January 24th. January 24th? On January 23rd, you were not a criminalist one. Is that right? That's correct. And on January 23rd, you had no prior experience doing crime scene collection. Is that right? That's correct. On January 24th, you become a criminalist one. Is that right? That's right. As of January 24th, though, you still had no experience doing any crime scene collection. Is that correct? 
That's correct. So with respect to crime scene collection, even though you are a criminalist one as of January 24th, 1994, weren't you in training in crime scene collection as late as June 13th, 1994? It depends on what, how you use the word training. Well, would you consider yourself a trainee as of June 13th, 1994? Or will in tr a trainee in the technical aspect, no. A trainee in the discretionary viewing of a crime scene, yes. Page 689. Yeah, I'll check. All right, let me see the transcript, please. Mr. Robertson, I need the transcript. All right, thank you, Council. Proceed. Ms. Ms. Excuse me, Council. Council. Mr. Newfield. Ms. Mazzola, does the LAPD SID Bureau have a probationary period for new employees? 
Yes, they do. Excuse me? Yes, they do. And uh, how long does it last? Probation is six months. And on June 13th, were you still on probation? Yes. So you were a probationary employee as of the time that you did the collection in this case. Is that correct? That's correct. It wouldn't be fair to say, ma'am, that as of June 13th, 1994, that one would classify you as a crime scene trainee. In crime scene techniques, no. In the discretionary area, yes. Ma'am, at the hearing on August 23rd, were you asked these questions and did you give these answers? Over. Question. And when did you commence your training in crime scene collection? Answer. Exact date, I'm not sure. Question. Well, the approximate date. Answer. Approximately a month after I began working at the lab. Question. That would be sometime around the beginning of March 1994. Answer, sometime February, I believe. Question, and what did that training entail? Answer, I went out to the crime scenes with more experienced criminalists and assisted them and also learned the different techniques that they employ. Question, and I take it currently, as of right now, today, you are still a trainee in crime scene collection. Is that correct? Answer. I would go out with a criminalist three to a crime scene. So yes, I guess you would classify me as a crime scene trainee. Question, and how long will that status continue before you are no longer a trainee? Answer, I believe it is for one year. Will you ask those questions and did you give those answers on August 23rd at that hearing? Yes. And when you gave that testimony on August 23rd, you were testifying truthfully, is that correct? Yes. You were testifying accurately, is that right? To my best of recollection. And would you agree that prior to your joining the LAPD, you had absolutely no prior experience with crime scene processing, is that right? That is correct. Hmm? That is correct. And when you joined the LAPD in January of 1994, you were given a full-time assignment to a particular unit. Is that correct? That is correct. And it is the purpose of LAPD to assign you to a particular unit so you can develop your skills in that area. Is that right? So we can learn their methods, yes. And would it be fair to say that the SID criminalists have many different units and many different disciplines? That is correct. And one of these disciplines would be, I think you refer to yours as toxicology, is that right? That's right. And another subspecialty would be serology, is that right? That's right. Question documents might be a third? That is not staffed by criminalists. How about trace evidence? Yes, trace evidence. Right. And then there's another uh, unit which is called crime scene processing, is that correct? Yes. Now, you weren't assigned to crime scene processing when you joined the LAPD in January of 1994, isn't that right? I believe, is that the field unit you're talking about? That's what I'm talking about. No, I was not assigned to the field unit. You were assigned to toxicology. That is correct. But there are other people at SID who are assigned full time to processing crime scenes, isn't that correct? They take their turns on rotation. Well, other than the people who take their turns on rotation, isn't it true that there are at least two people who are full-time processing uh, crime scenes as part of the field unit? I don't recall that. I'm not positive if that's true or not. You don't know one way or the other? No. Now, you also mentioned, ma'am, that you took, or that you're a member of the California Association of Criminalists. That's correct. And have you ever taken any courses from the California Criminalistics Institute? Yes. But the courses you took 
were not in crime scene processing, were they? No. You haven't taken any courses in crime scene processing outside the LAPD, have you? Not yet, no. Now, you mentioned also on direct examination that you attended this thing called the, the Mini Academy. Is yes, that right? correct. And that's offered by the Los Angeles Police Department? Right, SID. When you joined? That's in right. In January of 1994. Now, it's not really an academy in the formal sense of the word, is it, ma'am? It is training, lectures, and hands on training. Well, are you familiar with the Los Angeles Police Department Police Academy? A little bit familiar with it. Well, they have their own building, don't they? Yes. Okay. You don't have any separate building for no. your instruction, do you? No. Um, in fact, what you're talking about, this, this mini academy, is really uh, employees of the SID getting together once a week to hear lectures. Isn't that right, on various topics? No. Well, doesn't it meet every Thursday or something like that? It is more of a classroom type situation. And how often does it meet? Once a week. And there's no textbook assigned to read, is that correct? That's correct. And there are no books that are actually distributed to the people who attend this mini academy, isn't that correct? That is correct. In fact, this mini academy is given in the same room that houses your, your, your kitchen, your cafeteria, isn't that right? Isn't that it? Sometimes it is. Now, Have you heard of the California Association of Criminalists Certificate of Professional Competency? I have not heard of that, no. Well, have you heard of the American Board of Criminalists Certificate of Professional Competency? I don't believe so, no. Have you been awarded a Certificate of Professional Competency as a criminalist by any entity in America? No. Now, you said that on the morning of June 13th, you received a phone call because you were the next in rotation. Is that right, Ms. Mazzola? I was on call, yes. And whenever there is a major crime scene, such as this one, is it SID's goal to have two criminalists work the scene? Is that their goal? I am not sure what their goal is. All I know is I was on call and I was assigned with the CRIM 3. And you said that the, um, the rotation picks a different criminalist each week? You're on call depend for either a week or the weekend. And you said that other than yourself, you're not sure whether there are two full-time uh, criminalists who are assigned to the field unit to handle crime scene processing? During the day is when the field unit takes the calls. The criminalists on rotation are assigned to cover the nights and the weekends. All right. But during the day, even back on June, in June of 1994, there was a special unit, and it was staffed by two full-time criminalists, correct, to handle crime scene processing. Sustained. Well, ma'am, are you aware that the the members of the crime scene unit, full-time members of the crime scene unit who handle the calls on weekdays, are all people who have a lot more experience than you have. Subject to connection, Your Honor. You know that? They do have more experience, yes. And are you aware that SID often sends out two experienced criminalists to um, major homicide crime scenes? Sustain. The morning of June 13, 1994, who telephoned you at home? Detective, Detective Headquarters Division. And who was the person who actually called you? I don't remember his name exactly. He was from DHD. And what did that person tell you? It just, it's to explain subsequent conduct, I take it? Yes. Right. What were you told? He said that we had a scene. It was a 187, 
and he gave me the address. What does 187 stand for? Homicide. And did he tell you it was a double homicide? <laughs> I believe so, yes. And on that phone call, did he mention that um, uh, Mr. Simpson was a possible suspect? No, no names are given. No names at all? No names. Did he say anything at all, other than it was a crime scene involving a double homicide? This point's sustained. Your Honor, it has to do with, 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 with the next action she's going to take. Sustained. Proceed. Was any form filled out in the truck on the way to, the, uh, to Rockingham? Yes. By the way, before you got to Rockingham, in fact, when you got to SID, did you learn any more information about this crime scene? No. All you knew at that point was it was a crime scene involving a double homicide, nothing more? Nothing more. And what document did you fill out uh, in the truck on the way to Rockingham? Start filling out the front of the field notes. I'll show you what's been previously marked as um, defense exhibit number 1107. I ask you if, well, actually, it's easier on the screen. <clears throat> Is that the document you filled out? Yes. And uh, on that document, um, that's what you said, that under, under officer in charge, you put in your name. Is that correct? Yes. And of course, you did this before you arrived at Rockingham, right? That's correct. But you did it after you had conversations with Mr. Fung. Is that correct? That's correct. So j just so I understand it, before you arrived at Rockingham, it was your understanding that you were going to be the officer in charge at a double homicide. Is that correct? My name is under officer in charge because I was a criminalist on call at the time. Ma'am, didn't you say that a decision was made after you got to Rockingham that you would no longer be the officer in charge? Is that correct? Didn't you testify to that on direct examination? Yes. Well, if a decision was made after you got to Rockingham that you would no longer be the officer in charge, then isn't it correct that before you got to Rockingham, you were considered the officer in charge? Isn't that right? Not really, no. Ma'am. OIC stands for officer in charge, right? That's correct. Doesn't say next on rotation, does it? That's correct. Doesn't say next on call, does it? That's correct. It says who is the officer in charge. And then there's another line that says the name of the assistant. That's correct. And that's who's going to assist the officer in charge. Mm -hmm. Correct. You didn't like cross out OIC when you were in the van and write in not really or something like that before you put in your name? Sustained. Well, when you wrote in your name next to OIC, you knew that it meant officer in charge, correct? Correct. And you were identifying yourself as the officer in charge on a double homicide. Is that correct? This is Sustained. Counsel, let's move on. When you arrived at Rockingham, the first thing that happened is, is that the detectives briefed you on the situation? They briefed Mr. Fung. Were you present for that briefing? I was present, yes. Well, you arrived in your truck, you got out, and where was the first place that you went to? Into the front courtyard area. With Mr. Fung, right? Right. And that's where you encountered the detectives? Correct. You say the front courtyard area, you mean immediately in front of uh, Mr. Simpson's front door? 
on the driveway area in that vicinity. And approximately, um, well, the driveway area in front of its front door, though? Yes. Uh, in the vicinity of where you collected item number seven? Yes. And that's where the discussion was held with the detectives? Yes. And approximately how long did that discussion last? I have no idea. Well, at this point in time, you had only filled out one form, correct? The cover sheet of the crime scene investigation unit, isn't that right? Yes. And now, during these several minutes, you're having a discussion, or you are listening to a discussion between Dennis Fung and the detectives at the scene. Is that right? That's right. And how many detectives are there approximately? I honestly can't recall how many. Well, was it just one detective, or were there more than one? It was more than one. Was there more than two? I believe so. And at that point, those detectives gave you an idea of what items they wanted you to collect in that, in that discussion during those five minutes? They told Mr. Fung what they were interested in, and he came back and told me. You said they told Mr. Fung, and then he came back and told you. You mean you didn't actually get into this little discussion that Fung was having with the detectives? No. You didn't hear it? Excuse me, would you please repeat the question? Is the reason that you did not participate in that, that initial discussion with detectives is because you and he already made a decision that he would, in fact, be the officer in charge now instead of you? That and he seemed to be able to communicate more with the detectives. I was standing off in the background sort of listening, but he was the one that was doing the talking with the detectives. He was detectives. more assertive with the detectives than you Right. Were. And you said in addition to that, at the beginning of this discussion, he informed you of his decision that he would now be the officer in charge instead of you? Yes. That happened right at the beginning of that discussion? More or less, yes. Okay. And how long did you say that discussion lasted with the other detectives? I have no idea. Well. Would it be more than a half hour or less than a half hour? Less than a half hour, but beyond that, I have no idea. After this discussion, and after Dennis Fung told you that he was going to be the officer in charge, you then went over and looked at certain items of evidence? Yes. And which was the first item that you then looked at? The Bronco. And is that the first time you were told about the Bronco? Yes. And is it at that moment that you then filled out the crime scene um, investigation sheet for the Bronco? Yes. I thought it was item 4.30. They were telling me it's 4.30 p.m. That's, having that's why I have clocks all over the courtroom. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our uh, recess for the afternoon. Please remember all of my admonitions to you. Do not discuss this case amongst yourselves. Don't form any opinions about the case. Do not conduct any deliberations until the matter has been submitted to you. Do not allow anybody to communicate with you with regard to the case. However, I'm going to ask you to step back into the jury room briefly uh, before we recess as far as the jury is concerned. And Ms. Mazzola, you may step down. You're ordered to return tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock. Don't discuss your testimony with anybody except for the lawyers, please. All right? Thank you very much. <laughs>